Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, my name is LJ and you're watching No Clutch Garage. Today's video is as titled. We are going to be talking about the PCV today and particularly my fix for the PCV, which is actually a pretty well known fix for most BMWs. This issue can be traced back all the way to the N54 days, really. But let's talk about what's going on right now. Essentially, my PCV failed. Now, there's a part within the PCV system that is very fragile and it tends to fail under boost. That part that I'm talking about, many of you may know, and it is actually a PCV diaphragm that sits on top of the valve cover. Now, I did do a video on a valve cover teardown, and you can find that in that banner up above, but I didn't go deeply into the PCV. I did tear apart the internal PCV and we looked through it and how it works. On a stock valve cover, the system actually works really well. And especially if you keep the car stock, the PCV might still fail, but for the most part, you're gonna have pretty good luck with it. That PCV diaphragm is very fragile. Under high load, under high boost, it can tear very easily just because it's, it's essentially a silicone diaphragm and it's not very strong. And its main purpose is to open and shut when under vacuum or under boost, depending on which one. I can show you what is going on once I get to the shop, but essentially I need to go ahead and do the fix that fixes this issue once and for all. There are a few kits out there that do a really good job about this and for the average consumer i think it's a great option but for somebody like me that's actually pushing their motor pretty hard and i don't really want to have to deal with this all the time i'm gonna go ahead and do a true fix and i'm gonna go ahead and plug the head ports now you may ask well what are the head ports where well, there are some ports at each runner within the head that goes from the top of the head into the runners and essentially what those ports do is with the help of the vacuum coming from the intake system it's going to draw in all the crankcase oil vapors and anything like that the problem with that though is that if the pcv diaphragm is ripped then you can accidentally actually draw in oil that's an issue and that's one of the symptoms that you can see sometimes if your pcv is shot you'll see an insane amount of smoke coming out of your tailpipe so we're going to go ahead and eliminate that problem altogether by plugging the head ports i'm going to show you how to do it this is probably going to be the best thing you can do for your car and it's not relatively hard you will need a few tools that i'm going to point out and you're gonna need just a bunch of patience and a lot of um dear lord you're just gonna need some patience and just be very careful with this process so let's go ahead and drive to the shop the car already told me that i'm losing oil and you can see that right here so I'm done dealing with this issue. I just wanna go ahead and get it fixed. So let's get to it. All right guys, and before I dive in to fix this thing, I wanna show you guys what's going on. So this is pretty faint compared to how it is sometimes, but you can see that there's clearly smoke out here that's, you know, it's, it's really not good. And then out the front, I have some smoke sometimes too, but at idle, the smoke isn't so bad when i'm actually wide open it isn't bad either but it's when i come to a stop that it actually becomes really bad so i was having an issue with the pcv cap from ross performance and it wasn't anything that he did wrong it's just i later realized that my pcb was messed up like my actual valve cover so we're gonna take the cap off i already took the oem pcv off but i can go over it in a small portion of the video and just show you kind of how everything works but right now i'm gonna go ahead and take that cap off and i'm gonna show you guys how to fix this once and for all all right guys so i'm here at the shop now what i'm gonna do first is i'm gonna cool the engine down some I'm gonna let this run for about 10 15 minutes so i can cool it down enough for me to start working on it i'm gonna go ahead and run through the process very briefly just so that we understand what we're doing we're gonna be taking the charge pipe the top half of the charge pipe off we're gonna be taking the intake manifold to the side i don't have to take this one completely off because it's aftermarket it's small enough the lines are flexible enough to move anywhere so i'm just gonna put it to the side we want to have the intake runners available and open. I'm gonna start taking everything apart on the valve cover. We're gonna take the valve cover off. We're gonna stuff the intake runners with some rags or something to keep the shavings from going in and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then I'm gonna tap the head ports. I have the set screws 
that I bought from Home Depot. And I will be linking all of the tools that I use in the description down below so that you also can do this if you're having issues with your PCB or just want to get rid of this issue altogether from the get-go or if you're having issues currently. This is something that a lot of shops do and not a lot of people know about. You may look at N54 videos to kind of understand what's going on, but I'm going to show you how to do this right now in real time on a B58. And you can do this on a Gen 1 or a Gen 2. Both designs are pretty much the same. It's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to show you with a few of them in detail how to do it. So let's get to it. Alright guys, so now we have taken pretty much everything off the motor that we need to take. You guys can see right there, you guys can see the head, and then of course the area where the manifold is, we also need that cleared up. So you're going to have to take the manifold, I put it to the side because it's so much easier to move this one around, it's got the line, so I don't want to disconnect it and have to like take all the torn off. If this was an OEM manifold, then you would have to disconnect it and take it off. And in that case, just put something under your car so that you're catching all the coolant. Then afterwards, of course, you're going to have to put the coolant back in and do the bleeding procedure. With this manifold, I don't have to do that. So for me, it was just easier to move it out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things that I noticed as I was taking this completely apart to do this PCB fix. Some things that you might see. And also, I'm going to run you through the process. What things you need to be careful about. What things you need to look out for and how we're going to go about this in a safe way. All right guys, so first we have here the engine. You can't see it anymore because I already cleaned it, but all of this was filled with oil, which could be normal, but I know in my case, I know the oil's going everywhere, the PCB is shot. There's always going to be oil here regardless, but what I want to show you is this right here. These are the ports. This is where we're going to be tapping in order to plug the head ports. There's three ports on B58. On N55, you had them all individual. But on here we have three, one, two, and three. And if we look deep in here, we can see that there are actually two ports. And I don't know how well you can see that. All right, sorry, I had to switch to manual focus to get this right. But you can see there are two ports, one for each runner. And if you look in these, the port ends up being right there. So essentially what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stuff this runner. And I'm going to go ahead and stuff both of them because you can see through here the channels one of them travels this way one of them travels this way the problem is that if i try to begin to tap this side either one of these sides you're most likely going to have shavings on the opposite runner as well so i'm going to stuff these runners with some microfiber cloths these cloths do really good about catching any kind of you know small debris or whatever what you can do is grease this up a little bit so that way you stuff them in there and we're just going to do the one port that we know it's going to lead into. We're going to stuff it and we're going to do the same on the other side. Uh, I would grease it up just in case and then have a vacuum handy and have maybe like an air compressor handy as well. We're going to go ahead and tap these and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to take a vacuum and take all these shavings off so that you know we're not none of that is making it into the engine. And then as we're pulling this back after we're done we're going to have a vacuum handy and try to vacuum up as much of the metal shavings as we can. So for an added security measure what you could do is also go ahead and turn the motor over so that the valves are closed. That way, if for some reason, some of the shavings manage to get off of the rack. They're not making it into the motor. And then you can take a vacuum and go ahead and vacuum those out. So let's go ahead and get this set up and ready to go. Before I begin doing that, I do want to show you the valve cover. So here we have the valve cover. The PCV system is basically right here. So you have the high side, which feeds through here. And then of course the low side, which is going to go directly to the cap right there. So we don't need to plug the high side. The high side's fine. But we're going to be plugging basically these holes, right? But on the head. So what was happening here, and I actually saw it, is I was having oil make it into these runners. And as you can see, if I stick my rag in there, it comes out a little bit oily. And that's because the oil was making it in there. So because the oil was making it into the combustion chamber, I was also seeing these injectors were a little bit covered in oil. Nothing crazy, but there was definitely oil in them. And that's also a sign that 
your PCV system may be shot. Alright guys, so we're gonna go over what we actually need to make this work. So we're gonna need a quarter inch tap and this is what this looks like. You can actually get the kit from Vader Solutions which this is I didn't get this from Vader Solutions but I know they have it so I'll link it down in the description down below but you're gonna need this tap right here with this small tool. Another thing and what I decided to use was gonna be a quarter inch by 20 by 3 inches set screws. And these are pretty easy to find so I got these from Home Depot you can find them in the screw section and then we're gonna take some thread sealant we're gonna be using this 59214 Permatex to seal the threads so this is what you're gonna need so let's get to work all right guys so the first thing I'm gonna do here I have two rags and they have a little bit of grease in them so I'm gonna take one of these and I'm gonna be very very uh, deliberate with what I'm doing so we're gonna take this and this like greased up side you're gonna point it on the side on the direction that um, that runner exits at so on this right side of the runner and we're gonna stick it in trying to keep that grease on the top side you may use like a screwdriver if your fingers are not long enough and so that way as you can see the grease is on that side facing this direction so if any shavings come off off of that hole uh, which ends right here it's not very deep ends right here so all that all those shavings if they do come out after I vacuum and everything they'll get trapped right there shouldn't have to worry about much I mean we're gonna take the other one that we have right here I got grease all over my shirt now but we're gonna take this one as well we're gonna do the same on this runner right beside it and on this side we're gonna put it on the left side of the runner because that's where this head port is exiting at and just get it tuck it put it in there as deep as you can so it blocks off the valve and that should be plenty guys that should be enough now once your uh, motor's been turned make sure you turn it clockwise in the direction that it actually cranks valves are closed and you have to put those racks in now you can begin working and before we actually begin tapping these ports we're going to put some of this oil this is some cutting oil and put a little bit in here and we're going to put a little bit on the actual tap that we're using all right and we can begin tapping all right guys now that we have a clear view of what we're doing and we have an idea of what we're doing we're gonna go ahead and try it Alright guys, let's see if you guys can see what's going on here. As you can see, if you look in there, it's very hard to see because this camera is having a hard time focusing. So I don't know if you guys can see in there. I'll try to zoom it in, but there are threads now that were made. So now what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a vacuum and try to take as many of those shavings out as I can before we start putting the plug in. Yes, now we're going to put our set screw in and in order to put our set screw in we're going to need a 1 8 allen so this is what i have in my hand right now it's a 1 8 allen socket and i'm going to go ahead and put it in i'm going to test fit it first just to make sure that everything fits correctly and then i'm going to pull it back out put some thread sealant on it and call it a day all right guys, so i kind of want to show you this i'm going to do this by hand but we're going to go ahead and thread it in as you can see it's going in rather smoothly and it'll eventually bottom out but right now that's what it looks like if we go in there now it's completely sealed we put our thread sealant in and this job should be done pretty much just put that sealant in and torque it all the way down you don't have you can do this by hand and then just you know give it a little bit of pressure just to make sure that it's in there and uh, that's it and we're gonna repeat that on all six so let's go ahead and pull this one back out put some thread sealant on and then go ahead and seal it up all right, so here is my little plug take this thread sealant obviously now we have our sealant cut off the top and then this one we can just put a, a little drop and I'll put it towards the bottom because as I screw it in it's gonna go all over the threads I think that's enough actually that may be more than enough but 
whatever. Let's go ahead and put it in. Keep our plug. Go ahead and thread it in. And we're gonna thread it in until it bottoms out. So in that case, it's bottomed out, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of an extra turn just to ensure that it is sealed. I don't have to have a ratchet to really like torque it because this is a, after all an aluminum head. It's gonna be pretty easy to cut through it, but you can take a small ratchet and then just give it a little bit of a hand turn just to make sure that it's on there snug. Here's my ratchet. And then just give it a small turn. And that should be enough. So now it's in there and pretty much guys, rinse and repeat. Sorry, I wasn't aware that I lost audio on this part of the video, but essentially you want to ensure that when you go and thread the ports, you don't thread them all the way in. Allow yourself about an inch of thread and then use that to put in the set screws. This will allow the set screw to actually bottom out and not go all the way through down to the valves. Also, use a generous amount of sealant, but don't cover it completely with all the sealant in the world. You can also use thread tape and that will work just fine. If this video was helpful, go ahead and click like and subscribe, and I'll have more videos like this in the future. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.